Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSX News. As always, all of today's stories are timestamped down below, and I do want to clarify a lot in today's episode, so feel free to check out all of today's stories. If you guys want to skip this first one, it's probably going to be a very lengthy one, all about, I guess you could say, the people offended by what I said, and, and me being offended by what other people have said in the past, and what I'm referring to is, of course, Anomaly's Twitch ban, we have MoTV's Twitch ban, and now we have other articles out there targeting other people who defended those people, so a lot to talk about in today's episode, as well as some great CSGO stuff, so feel free to jump around, but the first thing I do want to talk about about is I want to clarify and I maybe want to say sorry as well on my standpoint on the MoTV and Anomaly ban situation. After going through all the comments on yesterday's episode, I kind of realized that my standpoint, my opinion on both those bans, first of all, was not really relevant. Second of all, probably didn't make the best stance on that argument. So if you guys know the MoTV ban and also the Anomaly ban as to why those did happen, I'll link my videos down below. And I do want to quickly say as well, I think I should have the same standpoint on both those cases. I think both those bans by Twitch, which at this point in time we think are 30-day bans, Anomalies ban will be 30 days. MoTVs we think will be 30 days, although it could be indefinite. We're going to uh, assume it's not going to be a permanent ban over there. I should say as well, based off their actions, in my own opinion, I probably should have ended yesterday's video by saying I think they both should have been banned maybe a day, maybe at most a few days, and given a warning by Twitch. Twitch handing out these 30-day bans for these, these borderline SJW, very, very uh, borderline, only offending a certain amount of people out there in certain context things, is really kind of pushing their limits. And I really think, uh, after kind of reviewing things as well, that neither one one of those people, Anomaly or MoTV, probably deserved a 30-day ban, and at the most, maybe a warning out there for what they did. Although, in my own opinion, what they did is probably not the best thing to do in front of a large audience, I probably should clarify that. Now, also, though, more importantly, but after I get that cleared out of the way, I do want to talk about, more importantly, a news article out there who apparently is not checking any of their writers, any of their freelance writers, which I assume he is, and that's an article written by Newsweek out there with this title on screen, guys. CSGO analyst Thorum defends streamers' use of an anti-gay slur, and then also they ended off with still working with ESL. So quite obviously, if you guys read that title, you can clearly say as well, you can clearly see Newsweek is not targeting MoTV, who this article is in reference to. Of course, the anti-gay slur being the FAG word that MoTV was using. And then of course, this article is inherently targeting Thorin for defending Mo. And at the very end of that title, it says still working with ESL, pretty much saying they're, they're kind of, of course, in, in inferring that he should be fired by ESL, all for defending someone who said that word. Which is an absolutely crazy crazy assumption when you think about this kind of thing. Thorne just voiced his opinion on Twitter, his very, very slight opinion that in the way that Mo was actually using that word was not offensive, and now this one person out there, Stephen Assarch, Stephen Assarch apparently thinks that he should be fired from his job all for voicing his opinion on what I consider to be not too big of a, not big, too big of an issue, and he did so in somewhat of a fair manner. Now, I'm going to link a lot of tweets down below for all of you guys to follow through the statements that Thorne did make. A lot of people were involved with this, Richard Lewis, Sky Williams, some big people got involved with this article, which I think was was really poorly written. So I'll also link the article down below for all of you guys, and I really just want to defend the point overall that the fact that these guys want to have Thorin fired for voicing his opinion is an absolute atrocity. Now also, very ironically enough, this writer, Stephen Assarch, his, his name on screen for all of you, very ironically, Richard Lewis also got involved, a heavy hitter you guys probably don't want to get involved on the opposite side of your argument at any point in time, actually pointed out the very funny moment that actually back in 2016, the writer of this article targeting Thorin for defending Mo about this uh, anti-gay slur had actually used the slur himself back in 2016. So Thorne, uh, of course, Richard Lewis goes on to point out that if Mo TV was saying this as well as uh, if Thorne was defending this as well, but Thorne never said that word, but this guy did, should he be fired from Newsweek? So a very ironic situation, guys. It's just kind of a sad thing to see that over the past week or so, at the point of me making these videos, this is now my third video on, the, on the, just the topic of everyone be offended by everything. Uh, it's just kind of hard to talk about, and I know it's it's always when I talk about these kind of things, there's going to be one standpoint very against it, one standpoint probably for what I'm saying, and it kind of really divides the audience. So this is going to be the last time for a while that I'm going to talk about these kind of issues. Feel free to leave a comment down below where you guys stand on the entire issue. Where do you guys stand on Anomaly's ban, on MoTV's ban, on Thorin's stance, defending MoTV? Where do you guys stand? Leave a comment down below. I will not respond to everyone, but I will definitely see everyone. But let's get back to the actual origin of this channel in CSK News. And firstly, we got a great message from G2's... CEO Ocelot. If you guys don't know his Twitter in the past, he's actually very well known for joking around or being very sarcastic. Although this video, I'm not going to show you guys. I'll show you guys screenshots, though. I will link the full video down below. We got a great message from Ocelot himself, apparently boasting about his two current French players who might be looking to play with North American players in the future. He also goes on to say, if any North American organizations or players out there are looking to win, well, he does have, of course, Apex and MBK, two of the best players in their roles so far in CSGO. Now, there's a lot of fire back right now, and I do want to say I'm going to take this very lightly. He's been known to be a jokester 
on his channel. He said some things that are very far out on his channel. He seems to be a very bold CEO, but seems to be a very fun guy as well. But I do want to quickly point out that when I was looking at the point of winning with G2 CSGO roster, apparently he is a pro at winning in CSGO. I had to stretch all the way back, I think, to DreamHack Malmo back in last year. I think it was actually September of 2017, the last time G2 actually won an event. So he talks about knowing how to win, but then he really has no track record of winning in CSGO. Unless you want to go back to, of course, the G2 days and before that, the Kingwin days, where he just spent a ridiculous amount of money on a lineup that didn't really do too much. But anyway, it was a cool offer to see, and I really am more interested in the side of this, though. If there are North American players out there looking to team up with this XG2 roster, it's going to be cool to see who he actually draws in with this post out there. And again, I do respect the guy for making such bold posts, but when you do that kind of thing, expect some backlash. Will G2, this current roster, be back to winning? Maybe in the future, but will these XG2 guys, Apex and MBK, be able to win as well under Ocelot? And also, before we get into crazy ESO Cologne news, because if you guys have not seen ESO Cologne these past two days, it has been so fun to watch. I cannot wait to break down that in Sunday's episode when we determine who's going to be the champion. And speaking of the champion, if it does happen to be FaZe Clan, if you guys did forget about ESL's Grand Slam Challenge, that is pretty much, they announced just about a year ago their Grand Slam Challenge all throughout ESL and as well as DreamHack's Premier Tournaments. If you guys don't know what Premier Tournaments are, every tournament with a $100,000 plus prize pool that is either ESL or DreamHack is actually a Premier Tournament for this event and they actually have I think just over 10 events this past year between the two of them there were $100,000 plus prize pools now the Grand Slam event was actually for all the players out there competing and for the players of the team who actually manages to win four of the premier events throughout the year are actually going to be awarded a $1 million prize pool to the players directly so that means of course right now I'll show you guys the current standings it does it say at Face Clan on top they have three of those premier event wins if they win ESL clone that means each and every player on that team is going to come away with $200,000 now there's other speculation out there. Of course, they currently have a stand-in player in Chroman. They've also used Exist as well as Olaf Meister throughout those events. So that money would be divvied up between those five, six, seven-ish players. But either way, guys, it could be FaZe Clan coming away with a million dollars extra prize pool if they win ESL Cologne. But also, if they do get spoiled by some event winner, so if they make it to the grand final, that is FaZe Clan, if they make it to the grand final and are spoiled by any team at all, they don't make their fourth victory and they're actually beat in the grand final, the team who beats them is automatically awarded $100,000 prize. So whoever in this tournament actually makes it to the grand final, if it is FaZe Clan and they manage to beat them, they will get a $100,000 grand prize. But if FaZe Clan wins, they will come away with a $1 million prize. Now also, if you guys did notice on the leaderboard, I'll reshow you on screen. It does say SK's current total victories are two and their, uh, their current victories is one, but their total victories is two. That's because every 10 events, they take every 10 events you actually participate in, they take away your first victory. So of course, SK Gaming had one of their first victories a long, long time ago. It was actually exactly 10 events ago they now have that victory taken away and it pretty much is no reset this continues on until someone actually wins it but that's why their current total victory is at two and their current actual victory is at only at one if that makes sense at all and in very excited news if you, again if you guys have not seen ESL clone I cannot wait for it to conclude on Sunday and it, if it will be phase clan that's gonna be really cool to see for the first time ever our Grand Slam champions and then again that would actually reset as well so it's gonna be cool to see if that does happen and that might be the reason why phase clan is playing out of their minds but a big competition between them and of course Astralis the number one team going into this they are looking absolutely phenomenal both teams looking very dominant in all their series so far so as of right now they have earned their automatic bids it will be FaZe Clan alongside Astralis automatically in the semifinals in opposite brackets and joining them hopefully sometime in the future will be the winner of these two upcoming matches guys Fnatic and Na'Vi and G2 and Big and again throughout group play guys it was amazing to see also on top of that though we had Smuya living up to his word not once but actually twice they met up with Liquid if you guys remember his interview with Red Bull, he said he was going to bang Liquid. I, 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 I don't... And they did meet up in earlier early brackets, actually in a best of one. He did just that. It was actually Big who beat Liquid. Liquid eventually was knocked out, guys. And on top of that as well, earlier today, at the point we were recording this, it was actually Big who faced off in a best of three. And it was actually amazing to see against MeBR. These guys took them down in a very close series. It went to map three Inferno in a double overtime. And it was Smoo God himself leaving, leading Team Big. And you could even say all, all players really equally pulled their weight on Team Big. An amazing side to see. And it really was Fur against the world. 
world here, uh, I guess during this best of three series, but it was amazing to see Big and the reaction on screen for all of you. Just the hype around this team has been amazing, and they do actually go on to make the quarterfinals, guys, and that was by far and away the best matchup to actually watch the entire day. So Smuya and Squad have now made themselves the quarterfinals, and they will face off against G2, who are also looking pretty do pretty dominant as well, and alongside them, Fnatic and Navi will also face off, and to be quite honest, all the teams who made it through the playoffs have actually looked very good so far throughout the entire tournament. Now, also bouncing off that, guys, this does mean for the first time ever since, actually back in 2017, I believe it was December of 2017, at the ECS Season 4 Finals, this is the last time we saw an event like this, and what I mean by that is that actually the last time we saw no North American teams make it to the playoffs, and alongside that, no North American players. It was actually Stewie2K on that MeBR roster was our last chance as North American players to go through to the playoffs, and it does seem as of right now for ESL Cologne, we have no more North American teams, no more North American players for the first time in nearly eight months, guys. We have no North American players going to playoffs, which is disappointing to see. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, uh, I just leave a comment down below what you guys have thought of this past week of news. I know a lot of it's been kind of controversial issues and I really hate taking sides when it comes to that kind of stuff because I really do believe that when you watch a content creator like myself this past week and I'm taking certain stances against or for people like MoTV and Anomaly, it really divides the comment section. So really quick apology for all of you guys out there who were offended by anything I said this week and I know that that's just like a, a typical thing for me to say especially after the topics we talked about but I do apologize for that. So thank you for all of you guys who have you did leave dislikes at least you left a comment down below as to what I said wrong and that's why I corrected myself earlier in today's episode so thank you guys for the comment section I really do appreciate you guys expanding your ideas and advice to me and that way I kind of enlighten myself and we can all kind of learn at least a little bit more about these kind of topics but also kind of classic news and I hate to give this guy the reputation but it, uh, well, luckily enough it actually hurts the VGO name out there we actually had Richard Lewis come out with a video a couple days ago an absolutely great video by him himself I'll link the full video down below for all of you guys but a little TLDR if you don't want to watch the entire thing Thing. It's all about Phantom Lord and his stint with VGO and alongside that his his former I guess you could say partner in crime that of course uh, her her on screen Apparently she's actually back Dingle Derper is back as well also promoting VGO But the main focus of the art of the actual video itself as well is Phantom Lord is back and suing people again If you guys remember his failed attempt or at least we think fingers crossed gonna be a failed attempt at currently suing Amazon and their twitch Services for barring him on on actually that streaming platform uh, that was because of course you guys are very well aware of the CSGO shuffle situation where he actually exposed himself on live stream for owning that website and he actually of course manipulated his very young audience into gambling on the website himself when he knew the percentages and he was taking money pretty much directly from all his 12 to 15 year old followers which is very much against the law so he, he went ahead and sued Twitch because that was of course very unrightful for them to take him off their platform for doing that because that was so rude of them and so now he's taking it out on the reddit forums known as live stream fails I will link that reddit forum down below if you guys have not watched it it's a great source of entertainment throughout your weekend, weekdays or wherever you guys really are. It of course is a compile, or compilation of all the live stream fails out there in the entire world and one of them actually surfaced was actually all around Phantom Lord, first of which was exposing himself uh, and of course him using VGO and that kind of thing. And during the clip, I'm not going to play it for you guys, either could Richard Lewis. I will link the clip down below for all of you, but pretty much the clip that made it onto the Reddit was Phantom Lord himself saying the word we when referring to VGO ownership. And again, you guys can watch the clip down below. He, he clearly says we are working on that right now. So uh, pretty much a clear indication he has some sort of ownership or some sort of, I guess it's pretty obvious he has a partnership of some sort, but it does seem to lean towards ownership of the VGO platform, which makes it all the more sketchy. If you guys have not seen countless videos about this in the past, and I, I already made my own video about this, and I know I'm already going to link way too many things down below, you guys know my standpoint on the VGO situation, but it pretty much sums it up is Phantom Lord actually tried to sue the Reddit, mod the Reddit moderators of that live stream fails Reddit because they allowed those posts to continue on the Reddit. It. Now, of course, he has no standpoint to make that. Pretty much Reddit moderators are only forced to take down material on their Reddit threads if the admins say it uh, say it's no longer admissible. And in this situation, uh, Richard Lewis actually talked to the moderators and the admins of this Reddit and they said it is totally fine content. It's publicly live stream content and therefore he can't just take it back out of nowhere and say, oh, you can't, you can't watch my live streams somewhere else it, it, yeah so there's no there's no grounds at all to sue these people as well and uh yeah pretty this is just screw this how 
is this guy still have an audience? How do people out there, how do kids out there still watch this guy? I'm, I'm just blown away. So I will definitely, in the future, I've been in contact with some people out there with some great information around VGO. If you guys want to gamble yourselves, feel free to. I think it's probably going to be a legitimate service. Uh, pretty much, I'm, I'm telling you though, if you want to lose money, continue to gamble online or gamble in general. Um, but I will have a part two of that VGO series, guys. After talking to some people out there with some more information, I will definitely make another video about that. But that was in today's last story for CSGO News. Just screw Phantom. Like, not even... As always, hope you guys all enjoyed. That, that, that last story just really kind of, I don't know, I feel like my neck is all tensed up and I just get really angry and I can't make videos when I'm angry. So I'm going to go now. I will see you guys all probably Sunday with a huge weekend recap of news. Thank you all for the great support this week. We had some amazing videos, some amazing responses. And again, you guys have been killing the comment section. I love reading those comments. So thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Jake Merlack You. I will see you all in a couple days. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. And I'll see you all then. Goodbye, guys.